Good morning. Good morning to all. We're very happy with, with the interest of all to participate in our first uh, workshop organized through the Madame Sud project in collaboration with Argentina, Brazil, and France. In these two days, we will have eight conferences in advance with all the speakers. We hope to have a good workshop. To begin, I, I am pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Samuel Bossier uh, from University of Portiers. Samuel, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you see my, my talk? Yes, it's okay. Okay, so well, thank you very much for your invitation. So, uh, today I'd like to present you some uh, recent results on uh, um, bigness and uh, stability of topological bundles on uh, case resurfaces, but, but more on uh, Hilbert schemes of points on key three surfaces. Bueno, chicos, continuo. Yeah. Sorry. No. Okay. So this work is a collaboration with my two collaborators, Gilberto Bini and Flamino Flamini, that you see here. So I will start by um, recording the classical definitions on the Itaka dimension and bigness of line bundles. And then I will explain you um, one way to generalize this definition of bigness to higher rank vector bundles. And then I will apply this to one family, one interesting family of, of vector bundles on the key three surfaces, which are Ulrich bundles. And then to with, uh, we will, I will explain you how to construct tautological bundles on the Hilbert schemes of these key three surfaces and to address this question of uh, uh, are they stable, are they big, and so on. And if I if time permits, I will uh, discuss something a bit different about the tangent bundles on T3 surfaces and its generalization in the higher dimension, because it's the same topic, but with different techniques. So let me start by recording what is the Itaka dimension and how we define bigness of line bundles. So in this talk, the X will be a smooth projective complex manifold of dimension N. And I consider on it a line bundle L. I will always mix up between the line bundle, bundle and the associated Cartier divisor D. I will see in my notations that I will, I will not be very precise between the divisor and the line bundle. So to define the Itaka dimension, we consider the, the set uh, of all elements M such that the tensor power of L has at least one global section. We denote it by N of L, it's a semi-group. And for any element M such that there is a, such a global section, we consider a rational map from X to the projective space of hyperplanes in the H0, simply defined by saying that um, I have X to all the sections that vanish at X. So of course, so since L admits uh, a non-zero section, this set is a hyperplane, but not, not, not everywhere. Uh, it is an hyperplane for uh, X, say, generic, so in some open subset in X, a non-zero one. So what we are interested in, in the definition of the Itaka dimension is we are interested in the asymptotic behavior of this map phi n as n goes to infinity. 
Now, this is, a, this is the way we define the Ithaca dimension, kappa, okay, kappa of x for the line bundle L, which will be, so if we are not lucky and there are no, no such n, no such maps, so with minus infinity, so if n of L is zero, Otherwise, if there are some maps, such maps, we consider the maximal dimension of the image of the map of the um, of the map phi n from x to this projective space, the maximum for all n. Otherwise, so what is this? Uh, this dimension of the of the um, image since, since it is a rational map. Sorry. Since we have a rational map, we call the dimension of the image. I mean, uh, the dimension of the closure of the graph of this um, of this uh, rational map. So clearly, when I do this, the Ithaca dimension kappa L x is always smaller than the dimension of x itself, because it is the maximal dimension of a, of a map from x to some projective space, and so the the, the big case, the maximal case, is called the, it is where the, the line bundle is called big. So L is called big. In the maximal situation. So that is where the Ithaca dimension kappa is equal to the dimension of x. So the Ithaca dimension is a generalization um, of the well-known Kodaira dimension. For instance, if I take for L the canonical bundle of x, Then the Ithaca dimension of the canonical bundle is the Kodaira dimension. And so, what does it mean for, for the canonical divisor to be big? Well, it is exactly when x is of a code of a general type. So by definition, if you look at this definition, uh, bigness is a geometric property of a line bundle. So it may be hard to, uh, to decide. But the first good news is that it only depends on the numerical equivalence class of the, of the line bundle or of the divisor. What I mean is that a, a divisor D is a numerically equivalent to a divisor D prime when it's intersection with all, when there are intersections with all curves are, all, are the same. So for all C irreducible curve. In particular, um, called that D is NEF, numerically effective. I will always write like this, that it is NEF. If its intersection with every such curve is positive. And so a very interesting property is that also, bigness is a geometric property of a line bundle. It becomes a numerical property under this net positivity assumption. And it is very easy. A line bundle, a divisor here, is NEF. You know, if the divisor is NEF, then to check that it is big, you just have to, to compute its self intersection n times, where n is the dimension of the variety. And if it is positive, it is, it is positive exactly when the divisor is big. So equivalently, uh, L 
if I take my line bundle, L is big, if and only if the integral of this first chain class to the power n is positive. It is exactly the same, the same statement. So now let me explain how to, to define bigness for um, a vector bundle of higher, of a higher degree. So I will consider, uh, again, x is uh, my smooth uh, variety of dimension n, and I take E, a vector bundle, say, of rank, um, it's French, of rank L, with or equal to one. And we would consider the projective bundle PE of uh, one dimensional quotients of E. So uh, be careful, I don't take line bundles, li lines on E, but uh, one dimensional quotients. And you know, by pi, the projections, projection of this projective, bu projective bundle to X, and by O1, the universal quotient of the pullback of E on this projective bundle. And we simply define, we say that the vector bundle E is amper or nef of big, simply when the universal uh, line bundle on the projective bundle, which is the line bundle on this on PE, not on X anymore, if this bundle has the same property as a line bundle, if it is ample, nef or big. In the case of bigness, Sometimes, because there are several definitions of bigness for higher rank vector bundles. So usually one says that the vector is L big. And this L is a, is a reference to a Lazarus field. So this is the L of Lazarus field. So it is bigness in the sense of Lazarus field. What does it mean geometrically? What does it mean to be uh, to be big? Well, uh, from the basic property of the projective bundle, so we have the basic property that the push forward of OPE. M times is the nth symmetric power of E. So what it means is that all these positivity properties that we just defined reflect some properties, not of the, of the global sections of the vector bundle E itself, but of the, of the symmetric powers of E. Again, bigness becomes um, a geometric uh, is a geometric property, but it becomes a very um, easy, quite easy numerical property under the nef positivity assumption. So if we assume that E is nef, so saying that it's universal um, tautological bundle is nef, then to check that it is big, you just have to compute the integral, integral of its a maximal uh, segregate class. Here, SNE is the maximal segregate class of X of E. So it, uh, the, um, the property of, of being big is that the integral is positive, but up to a sign which is minus one to the N and is, uh, to the dimension of X. So in particular, and this will be very useful you know, when uh, crucial is the end of my talk because well checking that e is nef you turn back to the property of o1 over pe so you i mean you're not so happy with that but what is very concrete when you take a vector bundle is to be uh, globally generated if e is globally generated So here you have a property of E itself. Then 
it is easy to see that it is NEF. So the O1 is NEF. And so in the SQL, I will consider globally generated vector bundles to check if the, um, to consider their bigness. So let me let me recall um, what is a segue class. One very easy definition of the segue class is to, uh, to start with the total chain class of a vector bundle, C of E, which is one plus C1, et cetera, plus Cn in the cohomology ring of X. And to define the segue class as a formal inverse of CE. So simply as a truncated power series, one over CE. If you develop it, because one over CE starts with a one, so you can consider the Taylor expansion of it, that will be start with one plus something in degree two, et cetera, and something in degree n with SI and H two I of X with integral coefficients. In particular, to consider, just to, to explain you the difference with the line bundle case above, in particular, if L is a line bundle, where the total chain class is one plus C1 of L, and so it's total segue class is one over one plus C one of L, which is one minus C one plus et cetera, plus minus one to the N, C one of L to the N. So this is SN of L. And so we will cover the property of, ne of bigness that if L is NEF, To see if it's if it's big, we have to compute the integral um, of c1 to the power n, and it is exactly minus one to the n integral of s n of l, which is positive if and only if l is big. So this is a reason, some way to explain the the, the relation between the this uh, numerical characterization of bigness for line bundles and for higher rank vector bundles. So it's time now to, to apply these properties to a very nice uh, family of vector bundles on a very nice family of, uh, of varieties. And I will consider key three surfaces and Ulrich bundles on them. So now I take X is not anymore any smooth projective variety, but uh, I take um, a key three surface. So let me recall you one possible definition of a key three surface. Uh, is that X is simply connected with a canonical class uh, zero. So this projective surface, I consider a, poli I consider a poli polarization on it that I call H, the numpel divisor with self intersection 2G minus 2 with G greater or equal than 2. And on it, on, uh, on this on this pair, so X polarized by H, H, I consider a vector bundle E again, so of, of rank, uh, rank R again, and I will denote for short by E N, the twist of E by uh, nth power of the polarization. So what is an uh, Ulrich bundle? So it's, it is not the defi uh, original definition of Ulrich, of course, but it is what, the one we need uh, today. An Ulrich bundle is a vector bundle with a property that twisted by minus one or twisted by minus two, it has no sections. And so, uh, why do I, st I stop with the twist by minus two? Because I'm on the surface. Right? Otherwise, you twist by 
up to the dimension of the variety. Okay, it's it's not the very enlightening uh, definition, uh, I, I, I guess, and it's clearly not uh, the one uh, Ulrich uh, used at the beginning. But it is uh, easier for what we uh, I have to do in the sequel. Maybe uh, a more a more concrete description. And more closer to the uh, to the original um, works of Ulrich is to say that uh, E an Ulrich bundle is a vector bundle that has um, a free resolution by um, uh, linear by, by matrices so a linear free resolution. And it is equivalent to this is the property I just wrote. So I will uh, consider a generic polarized key Swiss surface, meaning that H is the only divisor on X. So that Picard group is generated by H, that is polarization. So this is by um, what I mean by a generic polarized, polarized key Swiss surface. And under these assumptions, it is not difficult to check that an Ulrich bundle E has some very nice properties. First, it is cast a nuovo Mulford. Yes. Zero regular. And so, in particular, due to the work of, um, of Mumford, uh, it is globally generated. So this is exactly the property that we need. And of course, so hence net. And we can also check that the rank of E is always even, two times E. So R is two times some E. And this is the property due to um, uh, this works really because we work on a generic uh, case surface. And using a Riemann Hoare uh, Hirschberg works formulas and all these uh, classical methods, we can compute the integral of this, this second, uh, second class. And it is given by the quite easy formula 9a squared times g minus 1. So a is a rank in g the genus plus 4a g minus 2. And so what we see, well, um, a Nullrich bundle so is uh, globally generated, so it is NEF. This um, segue class is, is clearly positive. So all of these bundles on keys with surfaces are big. But it's a good news, but uh, I didn't uh, I didn't tell you that they exist. Of course, it's a, the big problem is to to ensure that uh, all these bundles do exist, and there are not, and that we have, I mean, uh, at least some some family of all these bundles to work with. And this is given by the theorem of Abhordu, Farkas, and Ortega in two, uh, 2016, saying that. For every integer a, so a is a uh, half of the rank, there exists a, a family of Ulrich bundles of rank 2r, and the dimension of this family is 6a squared plus 2a squared g plus 2, so very big family. And one more property is that these bundles are also stable. So we can consider a moduli space of, of stable Ulrich bundles of big dimension. But what I mean here by stable, I mean slope stability. Slope stability with respect to um, the polarization H. Okay. So this is the um, starting point of our project. What you want to do now? 
is to construct from this vector bundle, from these Ulrich bundles on field three surfaces, we want to construct higher dimensional vector bundles on some varieties constructed um, using field three surfaces. And these are the topological, topological bundles that I, want, so that I want to present to you. So again, I take, I start with a polar, generically, generically polarized K3 surface XH, a vector bundle X of rank R, and I consider the Hilbert scheme of key points on X. So let me recall you what it is. So X uh, key times is a set of points a point in the Hilbert scheme means that psi is a subscheme of X. Of dimension zero. And hence key. So generically it is only a finite number of points. Psi is just a set of key points. On X, but we allow uh, two ways to the two possible degenerations. We allow first multiplicities. to say uh, that uh, x1 and x2 are equal. And in this case, when there are some multiple points, we also keep, um, we take it into account the scheme structure of the, on these uh, on, on non-reduced sub-schemes. So we take care, uh, we take it into account the non-reduced scheme structure at the multiple points. Due to a result of, uh, of Fogarty, this Hilbert scheme is a smooth and projective. And this works, uh, smoothness works because we start from a surface. And since we start for, for, uh, with a T3 surface, it will, which, it will have one more property that I, mean, I will maybe have time to explain you at the end, that it is a holomorphic symplectic variety. But from, from now, I just need, need it to be smooth and projective. So uh, this variety represents a functor, so it has a universal family. Which is uh, sorry, key, the set of pairs take a subscheme and a point with the property that X is in the, in the support of Xi. And this universal family has two projections. The first one project to the Hilbert scheme mapping Xi X to Xi. And the second one that I did, second one that I denote by Q, I'm mapping to X, so mapping to the point X. Okay, we have all what we need to define what is a, the topological bundle associated to a vector bundle on X. It is simply the vector bundles we obtain when you start from the vector bundle here on X, you pull it back on the universal family and then you push it down on the Hilbert scheme. So uh, as it is defined, it is just, just a sheaf. But since, since P is flat and finite, the projection, projection P to the Hilbert scheme is flat and finite of degree uh, key, the number of points. 
then this tautological sheaf is locally free. Is locally free of rank k times r. Why it is called tautological? Uh, simply because it has the property by definition of this of this vector bundle. The tautological, the fiber of our psi is nothing else than the set the set of of global sections of the restriction of E considered as a vector bundle of X to consider its restriction to Xi as a subscheme of X and the global sections of, the, of this restriction. And by definition, this is the fiber of the tautological bundle of the point Xi of the Hilbert scheme. So this, this property explains why this is called um, a tautological bundle. So what we want to do, we are looking for conditions, ensuring that the tautological is globally generated first, uh, stable, because in order, in order to define a moduli space and big. So here comes the very the difficult part, because what does it mean to say that A, K is globally generated? means that um, so you have a subjective evaluation maps to all fibers are subjective for each at each point. So what are the global sections of the tautological bundle, again, because there is something it's a tautological, it is equal to the global section of E on X. And we have, a, you see, we have a commutative diagram here. It is the global sections of the restriction of E Xi. And as you can here, you restrict restriction. I restrict these global sections to Xi. So to say that it is, um, E is globally generated when this map is subjective or equivalently when this restriction map is subjective. What does it mean is that the restriction map is subjective for any subscheme. So it's a very, very big positivity assumption when the restriction map is subjective for any subscheme of length key. E is called T minus one very ample. So for instance, what is zero very ampleness? Zero very, very ample means that you consider the day subjectivity where T equals one. And this means um, global generation. So the main issue is that if E itself on the surface X is globally gener generated, well, its tautological bundle EK will not be globally generated. It's not enough. You see, we need something, some very much more powerful property to get a global generation of a tautological bundle. So we, with um, Gilberto Bini and Flamini Flamini, we looked at a paper of Beltrametti Sommese that proved some positive some, um, global generation result of tautological bundles, but it was only for nine bundles. And we managed to generalize this property to a higher rank vector bundles, saying that if we start with E globally generated, and okay, the, so say the tautological bundle will not be uh, globally generated, but if you twist it with something 
very positive. So by the polarization, if the polarization is uh, positive enough, so key minus one very ample, then the tensor product E times H is also key minus one very, very ample on X. And so by this diagram just above, the total logical bundle E times H uh, on the Hilbert scheme, total logical bundle on, on the Hilbert scheme is also globally generated. So uh, up to a twist by the polarization, if the polarization is good enough, then we recover, we get this global generation. So now we want to, uh, our goal is to see if we can, can construct big and stable uh, tautological bundles. So since we already have global generate, globally generated vector bundles, we just have to, to compute the survey classes. Uh, there is also this stability problem, but it's, uh, in fact, it, it's, it had already been done by Stapleton. And we got the results of bigness of tautological Ulrich bundles. So I, in our uh, work, we considered other families of bundles. Well, today I just explained you the case of Ulrich bundles, saying that if we take a Ulrich bundle offering 2E on the generically polarized Kiswi surface X, A, H, H of genus G, then the tautological bundle E times H is globally generated, so as I uh, told you, for every key. Uh, also stable for every key and uh, big. Uh, we just computed the, the final uh, numerical computations. We did it for key equals to two and three, and I will uh, explain you these uh, final computations in a minute. So let me explain you how we did this. So the stability. So there is maybe a, a trick here because stability is a slope stability with respect to something, and what it is. In fact, there is a morphism between the Picard group of X to the Picard group of X key, and that mapping H, which is our ample polarization, to a line bundle, which is not ample anymore, but it is big and F. It's not ample anymore because um, uh, it doesn't intersect the exceptional divisor of the of the Hilbert scheme, and so we consider stability, slope stability, with respect to this band to this line band, and it is a result of Stapleton, nineteen sixteen, saying that. If A is H stable, then the tautological bundle is stable for this an H. For this for this positivity, for, for this uh, slope condition. So to, to, to conclude, how do we compute the subway classes? Well, we Simply, we, we get an explicit formula. So here is the formula that we're not trying to prove here. That express for the Hilbert scheme of two points, you can express the maximal segue class. So here for any, it is for any vector bundles F, and then we'll apply to our setup. And this is a formula which um, um, makes appear all the segue integrals of the of the vector bundle on the surface X. How do we prove this? Well, we 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 just used some recursion formula using something that I will not explain uh, today. We use Nakajima operators, and in fact, this method gives some recursion formula to um, that computes all segue classes. Of tautological bundles, and we just uh, take the maximal one. There is another possibility not to get all segue classes, but only for the integrals. It's the same, uh, it's um, a different method, but uh, it, it gives them, I mean, it's not easier, it's exactly the same. Uh, there is a formula, a recent formula of uh, Marianne Oprea 
and Tanner Itande, it is uh, this year, which gives uh, a different method, method to compute these numbers. So when we apply it to our setup, we obtain a formula depending on the rank and the genus. So here you see that it is something of, uh, of degree two in G. So we want to check that it is positive. Well, it is uh, just an easy con numerical computation. You can consider it max the maximal value um, that makes this vanish, draw it, and you see that it, it, it is never zero when the genus is bigger than two. So from this, we see that it is big when the genus is strictly greater than two. Okay, in, uh, in 30 seconds, what, how does it look like uh, for the Hilbert scheme of three point, points? Well, it's a very uh, uh, big, a big formula but it, it, that can be computed with the same methods. Okay, uh, what is not nice is all these coefficients depending on the ranks. What is nice is to, is to see that how it depends on the segue integrals of the, of the surface itself. Apply to the case of the tensor product of a Nullrich bundle and a polarization, we obtain a very complicated formula, but not so complicated at all because it is something of degree three in the genus. We want to check that it is positive. Well, just look at uh, the graph and you see that uh, when, uh, well, it's not the proof of course, it's just a way of to see it in, uh, in two seconds. Uh, we see that the value of the total uh, top segue class is always positive when the gene genus is greater than two and the rank greater than two. And so we deduce that they are big when G is pretty smaller than two. Uh, I think my time is over, so I stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thanks for Shannon. Uh, we have uh, some minutes uh, for questions or comments. Can I ask a question? Oh, please, Leticia. Uh, so uh, what, do you have some relation between the, the bundle and the determinant? I mean, if, if the bundle is big, the determinant of the bundle is big? Or... I'm sorry, I, I can't hear, I don't hear anything. So I, I hope you have been able to listen to me because I have a feeling that I'm completely okay. alone and now. Can you hear me? Can you hear? I should write it. I wrote the. Oh, okay, I see the question. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't uh, hear anything. Uh, sorry, your question disappeared. I oh, can hear it. Okay, thank you. Is, is big, the determinant is big. Uh, good question. Uh, I, the determinant, oh, you mean the determinant uh, for the key switch surface? Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Oops, I'm not sure of that. Uh, I wouldn't say yes <laughs> for the moment, but uh, let me say a joker. I have to think of it. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, if, uh, if Flaminio or Gilberto, if you are here, if you have the answer before me, please feel free to answer. Okay, more questions? My computer doesn't work, sorry. Sorry. What? My computer doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> I heard the same uh, uh, call you for me, my name. Oh, uh, sorry. 
Okay, we'll leave it. <laughs> okay. More questions, comments? Okay, thanks again to Samuel. Thank mm -hmm. you.